So we have 37 minutes left. I want to make sure that we have some time for people sitting in the room to be able to raise questions. So what I'd like to do now, if it's possible, is really to ask each of you a question which I'd like, if it's possible, to answer it very quickly in two minutes, if you could. And I, the first question I have is for you, uh, Madame Touré, which is, you heard this vision of you know, multiple frameworks and, and coexisting. In some ways, you have some of that already. From your point of view, would that be a good outcome or would that be a bad outcome? Well, definitely, uh, I've spent now some years in the multilateral organization. I was a former UN personnel for many years, went back to, I mean, went to government. And I came out of this process uh, thinking that you need frameworks for sure. You need many frameworks. Um, and I always speak from the the point of view of Africa now, I mean, after having been global, now focusing on Africa, um, the richest continent, by the way, by any means, and the poorest. Um, so whatever framework that will deal with that issue, we're going to be part of it first. Um, second, um, I'm more interested, and I think that's the feeling in the continent, that we have to take uh, business into our own hands. Um, how to strengthen African Union, how to make sure that we are self-interest driven because that's how the world works and we are going to be more uh, forward coming in terms of um, you know, defending our interest, um, being very strong on you know, whatever issues and making our own points. Um, I appreciate it when you uh, talk about you know, sort of forcing some countries to, to take part. That was the case for the Russia, Ukraine war, and you know most of African countries look at it as a white man's war, <laughs> somehow, and uh, just didn't take it, you know, position, and that's that's our rights, um, like everybody does. Um, but I think the questions that need to be um, uh, reflect upon is how are we going to make sure that we uh, move forward peacefully. Uh, peacefully to a more equal order, an order that respects the environment, that put women also on an equal footage. Nobody brought the issue of, 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 of inequalities and, and, and making sure that young people are part of it um, and that we need um, for the corporations. I think that's, that's right. very important to bring uh, that upon. To look beyond profit, because we are a profit-driven um, world as we speak, so it's not enough anymore. So do we want to go through changes by revolution or do we want to be smarter and put in place, you know, equal, um, you know, frameworks where uh, true discussion comes out of, uh, of what, we, what we want to, uh, to build for the future. Every time I come in this country, in the Emirates, I remember that Dubai, a hundred years ago, was a small Bedouin village. So how did change occur? It means that it's possible. Uh, it means that you can accelerate change. It, and then you can uh, have a more sane discussion. Because we are having an insane discussion. Right. Uh, because you do have a poll of very wealthy uh, group of countries in front of, of very poor countries. But within those countries, you do also have that huge gap. I was visiting south of Senegal in the mining areas just before I came. I mean, it, it was terrible. You do have like very big mining companies, um, you know, taking gold out of the country. And they were not even capable of building a decent, um, you know, road <laughs> because they don't care about it. They just have an airport. They can fly a private jet. Go. There. It looks like the world we are in. Um, so how are we going to, 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 to take a pause and then come back to what the United Nations was supposed to be as a promise, um, and share the common interest as human being. Other than that, I mean, people are what I'm seeing now, uh, very much even into the you know within the intellectual elite is let's focus on our own interests as the rest of the world is doing. Um, human rights, okay, we can talk about it very globally, but 
it's not a reality. Right. So that's how we, we, we look at it. So what are the solutions that we want to come up with um, that, is, that are human rights centered, that are equal, and preserve the environment beyond mm -hmm. just the idea of pursuing profit? Thank you very much. So very clear message that you want to be clear about your own interests and engage in multiple conversations, multiple frameworks, but be clear about what is the, to the benefit of the, the continent and organize yourselves in a way to better represent those interests. And in that context, I assume that you, know, you and many uh, leaders in Africa would welcome the decision about making the African Union part a permanent member of the G20, because I think that in some ways is one forum where that could happen. Thank <laughs> you.